this game ends up going the distance here. Simply the incoming Welcome to Vani, ladies and gents. Spawning in the 6 o'clock position, representing Nuit Blanche, it is our French Protoss player, Petit Drogo. His opponent spawning in the top position, representing Dead Pixels as the Red Zerg player. It's true. That was a pretty darn close game number one, I have to admit. <clears throat> but it's game two now. It's a uh, brand new game. And uh, even Drogo at the end, he was like, wow, so good, GG. To me, uh, reading between the lines there, that wasn't a, oh my goodness, so good, I stand no chance. That was a, oh, I thought I played really, really well, and you just squeezed me out a little bit. That is not uh, something a player who's lost his confidence would say, and that's why I'm really happy to see what he's going to do here in Vani. He could potentially lose this series 2-0, but that game was pretty tight. It was a very, very good game. True, may want to consider his reliance on roaches given how well Drogo was defending against that all game long. Playing just a little bit better, he might have actually taken that game. Just a couple of little things, potentially force fields in the latter stages, certainly if he had something like an extra time warp or recall. Uh, just a couple of small tweaks to Drogo's play and I really feel like he could have taken that game. And well, we're already mixing things up in this game ladies and gents because we have the gold base being taken by True. Uh, straight away off the start of this game. Now this is very interesting because we actually have a gateway opening. It wasn't a Nexus first coming out from Drogo. Even though we have the in-base natural. And ooh, I, I, I just think this gives us a bit of a, um, a bit of an advantage here. Because it just takes so long to connect the creep to the gold base here on Vani. Uh, especially coming back with the probe as well. And uh, just making sure the cybernetics core and potential for early game attack is on the board as quickly as possible means that this gold base could end up falling to some early stage aggression. So let's see if Drogo can make something happen here. He's got a scout going out now. He's not going to be scouting the gold base. In fact, he's just going to be... See okay, so this is interesting. He's not going to be able to scout the in-base natural, but he will scout the third base location. If he goes to the in-base natural and sees there's no hatchery there as well, then he might instantly think about the gold. But no, he's going straight for the gold base. He knows that there is a chance that this kind of thing could happen. And he's going to spot the creep. He sees the hatchery as well. True knows that, uh, that Drogo knows. And now all of a sudden it becomes a case of, well, let's see if we can uh, pin the tail on the donkey here and defend a little bit. Drogo is definitely going to go into aggressive mode now for sure. Uh, warp gate research about 50% done. We have the Mothership Core complete now as well. <clears throat> Let's see how aggressive this ends up being. The Overlord is going to spot. At least the Nexus has gone down. So it's not like a one base four gate or anything absurd like that. We're going up to three gateways now. Though. Are we going to see a fourth one behind the mineral line? No, we're going to see a fourth one in his face. All oh, right, so four gate pressure, and look at the distance that queens have to cover to come defend this. I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't see how True is going to be able to defend this spectacularly. It's going to be very, very scrappy. And uh, Drogo here. Oh. If this probe gets killed off, this probe and pylon so important right now. So, so important. And the pylon is going to stay by the looks of things. I think he might want a second pile on just in case. I wouldn't be surprised if he puts one right there. Very, very tense. Very tight. The three gateways are about to complete. Warp gate research is complete, guys. So the four gateways are about to commence. We've got a sentry here standing guard with a force field on hand if necessary. And the pressure is about to start. A lot of units flooding in right now. We need to defend this at all cost if we're dead pixels true right now. 24 zerglings. Uh, we have a spine crawler and a queen here as well. He cannot afford to lose this gold base. That's an awful lot of units, but there are an awful lot of zealots as well. <laughs> no second pylon at the moment. These links trying to get in. Unfortunately, the sentry saying absolutely not. There's a second warp in as well. And we have two sentries to join in the mix too. Is this going to be enough? Look at these links. They're pulled. They're waiting for the fight to start so they can come in and attack from the back. But it looks like in an interesting twist... 
We're avoiding the spine crawling queen altogether and going for another hatchery. I guess that could work. That forces these zerglings to come in here off of creep. He's coming from two directions. Oh no! The sentry's actually getting caught out a little bit, having to recall, and that Ooh, that little bit of a mishap, I think, has cost Drogo the opportunity to pick off a hatchery. Uh, True has made a lot of units to defend. He knows that because recall has been used, they have to exist behind this wall now. So he knows as long as he keeps his units here, this base is safe, this base is safe, this base is safe. So as far as True is concerned now, mission accomplished. Very frustrating situation to be in if you were Petit Drogo. Imagine if those sentries were right next to the zealots here, guys. We could have had uh, the force fields very tightly knit around this army so that only the zealots were attacking zerglings, and he couldn't got it a lot more value out of that engagement. Unfortunately, the sentries lagged behind. Instantaneous recall was required. And look at, look at this. This situation is very difficult for the zerglings to engage because all the units are together. As soon as you have the sentries out there on their own, it becomes so much more difficult. And Drogo, well... Nothing much he could do on that front. These Zerglings are going to force possibly a cancel. No, he actually gets the Zerglings in. All right, so a little bit of a trap there. And uh, trying to use a small group of those Lings to pick apart the units at the back. Not able to do so. Really nice micro and great force fields from Drogo to uh, halve almost that sentry count there. And uh, continue with this game. Now, he hasn't lost any units, really. So he's still in an okay position. But... Uh, the gold has been mining for some time now, so economically True is just starting to squeeze ahead a little bit. Which means that we need to see a potential opportunity for Drogo to do something. True can kind of just hang back and tech up and know that he's in a game where he's a little bit faster than normal and therefore is going to be just a little bit more comfortable. So the onus is kind of on Drogo right now to get something done. And it's just going to be very, very tricky. Uh... I don't know. Where is the opening here? I mean, there are 26 Zerglings on the way. It's very clear that True just wants to keep Drogo back as long as possible so he can continue to enjoy this advantage. He's going to be able to take the space as a fourth whenever he wants. And uh, right now, he just wants to make sure that Drogo never gets up to a Death Ball kind of scenario. I, I wonder if he's being so aggressive that he's actually trying to see if he can take out this third base as well. Because that's an awful lot of units. But there are a lot of sentries and great force fields in with this army. Is it going to be enough? Good force fields, excellent force fields, but we need some units behind this to kind of take it apart, and we don't have that right now. We need more zealots being warped to take care of these zerglings, and it looks like True is going to be that aggressive. He wants to stop the third from going down. The nexus is up. There is no nexus cannon right now. The recall was actually into the main, uh, sorry, the natural expansion. It's going to take him forever to walk over to this third. A lot of zerg units here. He should just about be able to save the hatchery, I guess. The twilight council is in danger of going down. Blink is about a third of the way through complete. Is he going to finish the the job yes he's focusing it down now there goes blink a gateway might as well get focused down while you're at it and that's a lot of damage being done by true here drogo trying his best to hang on he's got 87 supply versus 91 supply block for just a bit here more and more units streaming in completely relentless only now is 1-1 one -one starting for true he is non-stop pulling units in and he's, uh, he's only halfway through his lair he doesn't care he's got so many units he just wants to stop drogo from doing whatever it is drogo wants to do and, uh, well, he certainly succeeded in that. I mean, Drogo is basically being sent back to the Stone Ages right now. He's still got 54 workers. He's doing a good job. But his army is just nowhere close to the kind of size he needs to move out and be confident in the middle of the map. And that's what True's trying to do because he's just been milking this gold base the entire time. So he can trade all day, every day right now. And, well, I mean, if you take a look at the mining... True is just ahead, so he's able to be a little bit more cost inefficient and still do well. And he's also set the tech for Drogo back as well. So Drogo with less has to do more is basically the story after that attack. <coughs> a couple more gateways being added on here, but he, uh, I mean, this is tricky. True, he's actually saving this base until absolutely necessary to take so he can mine as many of the minerals out in the middle of the map as possible. While he's got map control, why not, is basically what he's saying here. He's banking up an awful lot right now. He's got 1,600 minerals, and he's using that to make 24 zerg. It's because he's waiting for a whole bunch of infestors. Pathogen glands is on the way now, guys. And he's just banking up. Uh, that's why he's at 115 versus 114 supply. 1-1 one, one kicks in. He's got pathogen glands on the way. He starts 2-2 two, two immediately. And he doesn't want to create units un until he's absolutely certain he needs to. Checking out the army. Nothing out of the ordinary at the moment. Uh, Drogo not actually killing off this changeling right now. Oh, there we go. <clears throat> 
And he's not worried about that army. His army doesn't actually need to be any bigger right now to deal with that. So he's pretty cool. He's enjoying his economy. Blink is only now back up to roughly the point where it was before the Twilight Council originally got destroyed. He's going on to this space here. And uh, Drogo probably doesn't feel confident enough to take and hold this space right now. But I don't think he's going to end up with much of a choice soon. He's got predominantly Stalkers in this army, but I can assure you Blink Stalkers are very much put in their place, see what I did there, by a lot of excellently placed uh, Infestors if it comes to that. So uh, let's see what True wants to do in terms of exchanging these units off, because these Speedlings are going to do a really good job. You can Blink all day every day against Speedlings even without the Infestor support, and you know, you're not really wanting to Blink around to try and get rid of some of the cheapest units in the game. It's frustrating. It's annoying to have to deal with that. That's why the force fields are here. But imagine if the force fields become absolutely necessary because the fungal growths that land are just sick. That really would uh, possibly bring the game to a point of no return for Drogo right now. And True is massing an awful lot of energy on these Infestors. He might even go onto the high ground here. Oh, this is so crucial. The Phoenix sees the Infestors. He needs to see them. He needs to know it's potentially incoming. He needs to know how dangerous that can be. But now what does Drogo do? Does he push forward anyway? Does he split his units up and uh, risk losing a head-on engagement, but stepping away from the fungals? <clears throat> Can he actually compete with the mobility of the Zerglings? The answer is probably not. Look at how many Zerglings are on the field right now, guys. 156 Zerglings. He's certainly going to try and go for a full surround here. A lot of force fields going down. Some pretty sick fungals to start the engagement up. Not quite Dream Fungal, but they include the Mothership Core. No recall means interesting times for our Protoss player. And, uh, oh, well, it isn't going to be taken out. There's still some energy left on these Infestors. The Zerglings are still coming in. There's still 120 Lings, guys. I don't really see how Drogo's going to be able to break this apart. So many Zerglings right now. We need the perfect force fields and the perfect engagement. But I don't think the Protoss can kill them off fast enough. You can zone them out, but how are you going to kill them? That's really the question that Drogo is asking himself right now. And it looks like the answer is a ridiculous crap ton of Zealots. Uh, that's a metric unit, in case you're wondering. Not Imperial. Ooh, missing a little bit with a fungal growth there. Good force fields to zone out the army, but True is definitely looking for a fight. And a sick fungal growth into the middle of all those units, including a whole bunch of sentries and zealots. And they are going, pop goes the weasel right now. Still more energy available. Missing one fungal thanks to that recall. It's going to be going back to the third base location. 185 to 121 supply true. Enjoying complete map dominance right now. And it's 2-2 two, two upgrades versus 2-1 as well. And we have a transition into ultralisks and chitinous plating on its way. So how are we going to be able to respond? Stalkers, well, they do great damage against these armored units, but uh, they're able to blink away and kite out these uh, ultras as well. But you know what? The Infestors are still alive. And as long as you have fungal growth there, it's going to be such a difficult engagement for Petit Trogo to take. Which is why more Zerglings are coming out to support uh, to support these Infestors. You want to make sure those Fungals can be as aggressive as they possibly can. We're now forced into taking a fourth base at this goal. I can assure you this is not a safe location to take. True, as soon as he notices that, is going to be all over. And we have a huge warping of Zealots. Oh, a pretty sick Fungal to begin the engagement there. And all of these Zealots are not actually tackling. <gasps> Holy crap, that Blinding Cloud was excellent. Good blink back, needing to micro against that. But I think the Advent and the moving in of these Ultralists could end up sealing the deal here. Drogo goes down to 91 supply as True moves into the third base location. The fourth at the gold isn't going to matter. A lot of Infested Terrors adding some DPS to this. The Ultralist just taking way too much damage at the front of this army. True reinforcing non-stop. He's got five more Ultralisks and Zerglings behind this. GG, that's too much. And Dead Pixels True by a scoreline of 2-0, to zero, but in two incredibly entertaining games, will advance into the semi-finals at the expense of Nuit Blanc's Petit Trogo.